Stay tuned. Band in Seattle starts right now. Hi, welcome to Band in Seattle. I'm Xander, your host. Band in Seattle features up-and-coming bands from all over looking for their break on the national stage. Tonight we have two great bands, Crooked Veils and The Bend, here in our studio ready to share their music and their stories. We'll be right back with Crooked Veils and what they call Songs to Complete Unfinished Dreams. For Crooked Veils, everyone. My dad was a teacher and had two of his students at his singing recital. And he said, I just looked up at him and I saw the two girls singing and said, I want to do this. I started singing in the cover world, so singing other people's music so at clubs and casinos. Every now and then I go in the studio and do things, but it's always really been cover world. And I have a book like this big of my own music, meeting up with Leif and Zach. It, it kind of it came together. They had a, they actually had a girl before. I was like, hey, if it ever doesn't work out, you know, let me know. And I sure enough, I got that phone call. Angelina is uh, another one of my favorite songs. It has a very catchy hook. Um, but a very deep meaning. It talks about a girl that was physically abused. I was in a relationship that was physically and mentally abusive. So when I sing that song at the beginning, those lyrics, I really, I think about that. I think the first time I sang it, I cried. lead guitar of Crooked Veils. I, I grew up in a really like super religious house. I heard my first like dirty words, I had my first Thai food and realized that there was an actual city where I live all when I was 18 like going up uh, to the studio to record and so at that point in my life I just anyone that would let me play in their band I would like play like stay up all night practicing sleep in the parking lot at Starbucks where I worked do whatever I could to be in any like I'm just gonna play and play. And through that, I met this guy, Burke Thomas. He kind of would just put me in every band he was in, I think because I was just really happy and read the Bible a lot, didn't drink, and didn't, you know, I didn't really mess around that much. And then one day he just called me and was, um, he's like, hey, the guitar player from Vendetta Red's dipping out. You wanna, you wanna do this thing? So that's how I met Zach. And then once I met Zach, we were just kind of like instantly best friends. Like he's a, he's like my heterosexual life partner. So I've been playing with Leif for the last eight years and other different bands and stuff. Uh, we just kind of, he's kind of like my musical wife. We kind of have a rule that like, whoever writes the best part for the song, that's what stays in the song. And I'll be damned if it's usually not his part. <laughs> end up, you know. I think it's a killer, upbeat song. I'd love it to be like the first song on an album. Probably will be the first song on our album. 
And I had to leave home at 14, bouncing around in group homes and just kind of seeing uh, the worst that humanity had to offer I, in a lot of ways. And it took me a long time to value the things that are important, like family and you know stability, because I, I never had that. But I was always compelled to tell stories, to tell my own story, to embellish uh, other other people's stories. To you know, I feel like I've always had this need to kind of be heard, and not really, you know, not necessarily to be loved, but more to be heard. That was always more important to me. So, but yeah, I I, I feel like there's. Every waking moment, there's something going on, something spinning in my brain. It's making me pick up a guitar, or pick up a paintbrush, or pick up my kids for crying out loud. Dan in Seattle will be right back with more of Crooked Veils. Musically, I was really inspired by Heart of Glass by Blondie. Writing this song, I was trying to deconstruct that song. Literally, like top to bottom, I'm deconstructing Blondie's heart of glass. I like to call rock -roki my nine to five job. I have my degree um, from UW in social work, but I've always been involved in music and rock roki is the most consistent, I guess you wanna say. Karaoke with a live band. Uh, basically there's a band on stage and we have a list of songs and you get to sing with the band. A couple of guys were moving, so I had some dates left in the club that I had to fulfill. I said, well, what do you wanna do? And he said, well, let's just put a uh, a band together and do classic rock stuff. We did that one night. I noticed that everyone knew every word to every song, and I just looked at them. I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. So Seattle is a small knit music community, and we all kind of know each other, and it was great that Leif had a chance to get involved in rock and roll through George, and then Leif brought um, Zach along, and so that's how we kind of, you know, we started to know each other. And if, if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be in Crooked Vale, because they would have never never known who I was. They're closer, it's even better. Oh, so you guys know this song, Tris Calypso. Tris Calypso, that song I wrote it on my daughter's xylophone. <laughs> they just came out. Do -do 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 -do. I was just playing with her in her room, playing these little toys. And as soon as I went, do -do 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 -do, like and the world stopped. I had to like get my wife to come in the room and take over playing with the baby. And I ran and like just wrote the song in like three and a half minutes or whatever. person, very trusting person, and I think the guitar was the first thing in my life that was actually me. It was the first thing in my life that I actually um, wanted to be a part of. You know? I want to reach people, and I feel like when I'm up there feeling the music and the love that I have for it, if I can engage them, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I love. I love getting the energy from the stage, from the people that are watching.
the things that makes Seattle such an incredibly rich, vibrant music community is uh, not only its ethnic diversity, but its economic diversity. You have uh, entrepreneurs and then you have everyone who works for them and they all have, they all come with their own unique perspective, their own unique story on their life experience. And I think it provides with an incredibly diverse spectrum of music. I almost even just feel like it's like the weather plays a, a, a part in this, where it's like there's enough rainy days that you just literally have no choice but to be creative. <laughs> Next up on Band in Seattle, the indie rock sound of the band. Stay tuned. I'm the lead singer for the band, and this is The Kill Room, where we record our albums. I moved to Seattle in the late 90s, and it was kind of the, the final end of what grunge had left behind. I was really excited to move here because I was thinking, oh, this is Jimi Hendrix, you know, heart. <laughs> like, this is such a historic music rock town. And, and then I was very depressed because it seemed as though the next, like, five or six years were very heavy DJ-based. <laughs> and, and the rock scene kind of went away, and. That was kind of disappointing, but we've been doing it the entire time, and now I feel like Seattle's on the verge of rock really coming back and taking its rightful place. And I would just grab LPs and go into my room and lock the door and just sit there and listen to albums over and over again. And I'd be like, wow, Bruce Springsteen really understands me. And as foolish as, as, as that sounds, now as an artist, it's kind of my goal to write songs that people would listen to and get some type of like solace out of it or it'll, it'll make them feel better even just for the moment. Because I think it's the greatest connection that humans can make on, on a mass level is through music. Empress is when I, what I think is uh, one of Jay's best vocal performances of all time. Uh, just kills it on that song. Emperor's calm, what have you done to me that I fear I'm already gone? It's the last of all days, I know it won't bother me, cause we weren't built to go this long. Oh, and there it goes. What I wait for and what I don't know. In your arms, there's been nothing that could break your first call. Tell me what have you done? Stealing it all for yourself. Stealing it all for yourself. Jay, you know, he's my best friend, so we've, uh, We've been on this journey uh, since we met. When we landed in Seattle, leaving LA, uh, we, we just couldn't get out of there fast enough. Uh, it was a nightmare. We were running out of money. We were just struggling musicians, and we came to Seattle, and it just was just fresh air. There's so many bands here, it's unreal. Uh, I just, you can't walk, I can't walk a block without meeting someone either I recorded or played a show with or or, or whatever, They're, they work at every coffee shop, every restaurant, half of my employees are in bands. Um, uh, every bartender I know is in a band, you know. 
It's just a serious music town. Disappear is like an exercise in trance or like repetition. It, it's supposed to kind of sedate the listener and then once they get completely comfortable within the workings of this repetitive groove, we kind of bash them on the head with a mallet. Band in Seattle will be right back with more of The Band. The Divider is about telling somebody to make a choice to get off the fence because everyone's tired of waiting. Like, thinking back to it, it's just one guitar, hard pan, one guitar, hard pan left, and they're just kind of going at it, and it's just sonic like fight the whole time and then you just have Jay's vocals piercing right down the middle. It's just something that we've never really had the had the cojones to do in the past. When we were signed in the music industry, we got a lot of things taken care of for us, but it wasn't like a weekly paycheck. I still, even then, I still like worked four or five days a week or whenever I could to make rent money. You know, the music industry is hard. <laughs> but I'm not doing it really, you know, the money isn't why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because of this inner need to do it. Both my parents are music educators, and my first experience in the studio kind of just did it for me. Like, I uh, liked everything about it. It was like everything that I was kind of running from on the music side of life, because when you grow up, your parents kind of don't want to do the same thing they do or whatever, it, but it just all kind of clicked. All my skills kind of came into one thing, you know, writing, recording, creating, and that was pretty much it. I, was, I had the bug. King Kong is based around the idea of, I had this visual of a guy walking out and uh, stepping on the ledge of a building just to take like a smoke break. He's like 10 stories up. And all of a sudden, everyone on the street assumes that he's suicidal and is going to jump. It's, this guy's standing there and he's watching this crowd and all these people form and, and he's like kind of doing like a uh, sociological like study while he's there because he realizes at that point that like half the people are gathering because they want him to jump. My name is Floyd Ernest Bender III. I play bass in the Bend, and I make my living as a bartender. I love all these guys, and our fans are the best fans ever. 
We have such a great crew of people that have helped us put on every event and do everything for us and they do it all for free and they're killer. Uh, I just can't say enough about the people that we surround ourselves with. That's the best part of this band. She's Evil is a, is a tune that uh, Ben wrote himself. It's been reworked over and over and over and over and it's finally what it is now. She's Evil because uh, she is an ambiguous word in the sentence. <clears throat> you could listen to it and think it's about a uh, stalker <laughs> or an ex-girlfriend or it could also be about a boat. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. <laughs> Thanks for watching Band in Seattle. To see all of the concerts filmed in our studios, go to our website, bandinseattle.com. Next week, we return with Gun and Furniture Girls with more great music and great stories on Band in Seattle.